Hi there, this is uh, Keith Williams of UVA and I uh, thought I'd make a little video to tell you a little bit about some cigar box projects, um, cigar box instrument projects that have been going on at UVA. Um, let me show off my little box first of all. Um, this is um, a relatively simple little thing, took, about, took me about two hours to make by myself, just using um, fairly standard tools, a Dremel tool, um, screwdriver and some glue uh, and some screws. Um, this one is built with a pre-carved um, neck from China. This is a half-scale violin neck that I got off eBay for about, um, uh, I think you can get a dozen of them for about 50 bucks or so. They're really, really amazingly inexpensive and great to use. Um, and I don't, honestly, I don't think there's a whole lot to be learned by making your own neck. You could see and see them, but it takes a lot of time and I don't really know if it teaches much. Um, the real intrigue with these instruments, of course, is the acoustics and how the sound couples from the strings via the bridge to the body. So that's where I think the time should be spent if you're trying to use this as a learning exercise. Um, let's see, I had tuning pegs. Um, some students will 3D print their tuning pegs, but I find those to be pretty flimsy. So I just use standard tuning pegs. Uh, it works nicely, um, relatively easy to use. Um, uh, this particular one, let's see, I made pretty much everything. Let's see, I got the, the, I got a Halloween coffin box from Michael's for about a buck. Um, and that's what that is. I didn't do anything particularly special to make a sound hole. Um, you know, more conventional design would have F holes, but, um, it, a cavity this small, I don't think that that makes really much difference at all. And I just, so I just went with a sort of a circular hole and I made a bridge that sits on the side of the hole. Um, and then to clamp the strings down here, what I did was just take a nice firm piece of wood, scrap wood, and drill holes in it so that the beads of the strings draw against the holes. Um, I made the fingerboard out of some scrap wood and made the nut out of a toothpick. Um, what else? I guess that's about it. Um, I decided to go with three strings um, because Four strings would be too hard to play. This is such a small instrument, it's really actually hard to get your fingers around there. So this gives you fairly standard spacing there so that somebody proficient with violin could probably actually play this thing. Um, so let me show you some other um, cigar box violins made by some of the students. So the way the project works is I give them a cigar box, um, just plain old cigar box. Um, this one is a Fonseca Fabrica de Tabacos Cubano Limitado, whatever that means, um, from the Dominican Republic. And, um, you know, it's nice to have an instrument that has a Surgeon General's warning on it, right? Um, so what the students do is they start off with the box um, and they tap on it. And they just tap on the raw box and they start to understand where the sound comes from and what kind of sounds they get out of it. And then using CAD simulations, they can decide uh, what kind of hole patterns they want to make because they're trying to actually make the string speak to the box, so to speak, and to try to um, shape the sound and color it via the sound holes in the box. Um, and so this team really went to town. They, they got some really interesting sound holes. Um, and they've also um, made their own bridge. And uh, you can see it's a little bit shimmed up there. They took a conventional fine tuner holder off a of violin, um, also a very cheap item, and uh, just pulled the beads against there. Um, and they've got a um, inclined fingerboard here, which makes it really easy to depress the strings and they made a nut out of some scrap wood, it looks like. Um, so relatively simple. Um, the, um, the inner workings of the box are, uh, unfortunately you can't see from the video, but there's actually a sound post in there and then there's another sort of little inner piece of wood there that stabilizes the whole thing. So you get some really cool sound out of it. I don't know if, um, this one hasn't been tuned, but, but I don't know how well you can hear in the recording, but actually it sounds quite good. Um, something that a lot of the students don't realize until the very, very end of the project is that you need some sort of indentations on this side of the bridge just to allow the bow to pass. A lot of people think that that um, sort of hourglass shape of a violin or cello is for some sort of fundamental acoustic reason. Actually, it's not. It's just to allow the bow to come and go uh, on either side. And so that's a good learning opportunity for everybody to learn uh, what's important and what's not important. What's, what's less important. This team went with a more conventional um, uh, or a less conventional sort of design. Um, I guess you could say that their sound hole is more like a treble clef kind of thing. 
Um, and you can kind of see how well these sound holes work just by tapping around. You get different sounds from different areas, um, which provides vibrational modes to which the bridge, the, the vibrations from the, from the bridge can couple. So this works really, really nicely. Um, another nice design, this one's kind of similar to mine. Again, the beads are just drawing against a piece of wood. Here's another design made by some students is a little more conventional, um, symmetric hole pattern. And the nice thing about these big flaps here is that they give a really nice bass sound. And so that's it. those are some sounds that, that the vibrations can couple to and really get some nice deeper um, resonant color. I haven't played this one, but it's actually quite nice. Um, playability is an issue. Um, most of the students don't really worry about playability until the very end. And so, you know, the typical problems they have are with the fingerboard, not knowing how hard it's going to be to press the strings down. And also the quality of the sound I find can often be greatly improved. Um, the Q factor of the modes, if you want to think of it that way in a technical sense, can be improved just by putting a pin by the nut and perhaps also on the bridge and that will usually give you better defined nodes. Um, so students learn all kinds of things like that um, and it's a really excellent learning exercise. So let's go back to my little box and see what it can play. Um, I don't know how to play it, to be honest. It's um, so little. <laughs> I don't know if I can hold it. Um, I probably can't hold it like a violin. I guess I could hold it like my. Okay. Well, my idea is to hold it like a little tiny cello. So let's see how that goes. There we go. And I think I would hold it like this. Kind of dainty little thing. Um, it's actually quite quite strong. hard to learn how to play this thing. But once you figure it out, you can actually get some pretty nice sounds out of it. So, it's fun. Fun for the whole family. You can make all kinds of different designs and learn a lot about instruments and learn about CAD and um, Hopefully, remove some of the mystery of how instruments, musical instruments, are made and how they, why they sound so good. Um, uh, really, an excellent project for introductory engineers, particularly those going into mechanical engineering, but also um, because of the data analysis and all that other stuff. Just good for everyone in general, um, science and engineering. Um, this broad project, this particular one that I made, took a sum total of about two hours. So, also not all that time consuming.